What's up everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to show you a new powerful and cheap model launched by Google, which is the Gemini 2.5 Flash. So just a few days ago, Google released a new AI model called Gemini 2.5 Flash, right when OpenAI also released its O3 and O4 Mini models. This model is very interesting because it can be a reasoning model as well as a non-reasoning model, similar to Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. It's designed to be a low-latency, cost-efficient, agentic model that can process high volume, massive amounts of information. It can work as chatbots, researchers, as well as coding agents. The 2.5 Flash model is already available in Google AI Studio, so if you go to aistudio.google.com, then click on the drop-down menu, you should see the new 2.5 Flash Preview option as shown here. Select the model, and now there are two different modes that you can use with the model. You can use the thinking mode, as well as setting the thinking budget, up to the maximum amount of 24k tokens. This means you have control over how much the model thinks, and whether you want it to do reasoning or not. Now the best part of this Gemini model is the pricing. 2.5 Flash comes with two different pricing tires. For the thinking mode, you're paying 15 cents per 1 million input tokens, and $3.50 per 1 million output tokens, which is a steal for that level of performance for a thinking model. You also have a known thinking mode, which has the same input price, but the output price drops significantly at only 60 cents. This pricing is just unreal, especially for real-time applications as shown in this panel that the model is best for powering large-scale processing, thinking through complex problems, and perform various sorts of agentic use cases such as coding, researching, or anything else that AI models can do. The knowledge cut-off date of this model is January 2025, definitely much further when compared to GPT models which is still in 2024. Now, what's also nice is that Google also increased the request limit for the free tire. In the free tire, you will have 10 requests per minute and 500 requests per day, which is definitely quite generous. About the benchmark scores, the 2.5 Flash is insanely powerful for its size. In terms of its context window, it obviously inherits the 2.5 series 1 million context window, and it does pretty good in comparison to many of these other models like OpenAI's O4 Mini, Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, Grok 3 Beta, as well as DeepSeek R1. In most cases, it outclassed the others. But the only thing that I would say it's slightly behind is on Live Code Bench. But in other cases, it is doing pretty good overall. In multilingual long contexts, as well as math and science, it is outperforming all the other models. In code, it is slightly behind, but it's definitely still a great alternative to use in comparison to Gemini 2.5 Pro or Cloud 3.7 Sonnet because of its pricing. Now, one more interesting data point I found is from the Aether LLM test. In this test, Gemini Flash got 47.1% correct while costing only $1.85. Meanwhile, the Pro version got 72.9% correct while costing $6.32. From this, we can see that Gemini 2.5 Flash has about 65% of the Pro version's performance while being around 70% cheaper. So, depending on the complexity of the task, using 2.5 Flash might be the right choice when you're optimizing for costs over reliability. For simpler tasks where near-perfect precision isn't necessary, the savings could add up quickly. But for more nuanced or deep complex problems, the Pro version's higher performance might justify the extra cost. Okay, let's put the Gemini 2.5 Flash model to the test. We are going to draw some math, coding, and logic tasks to assess this model and see how well it performs. Now, yesterday we actually had taken a look at the O4 Mini hike and saw that it was a decent model that was capable of passing all of these different tasks. But let's see if the Gemini 2.5 Flash is capable of doing the same. The first task is to create an SVG of a solar system with the Sun at the center and 5 orbiting planets. Each planet orbits the Sun with different speeds. Each orbit should be a visible elliptical path. Label each planet with tags that follows its orbital path. The labels for 5 planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter. This will test the model in terms of creatively creating visuals using SVG and figuring the math for motions. 
I will grab this prompt, paste it into Google AI Studio, and fire away. I will pause the video here and skip ahead to when the generation is done. Okay, here's the result given by Gemini Flash. This output is definitely not complete, as the planets are all positioned at the top left and not moving. The orbital path is also circular circles instead of elliptical. Let's ask Flash to correct this mistake for us. Type, the planets are not showing and the orbits are not elliptical. Okay, now Flash generated a new SVG. Let's try to run this one. Alright, so the result after running the second generation is still the same. There is no change at all as shown here. So this means Flash failed the first test. But that's okay because we still have many other tests. For the second test, create a front end of a modern Kanban board like Trello. Users should be able to add, edit, or delete columns and tasks, and drag tasks between columns. Save data in the browser. I will pause the video again and skip ahead to the result. Okay, so this is what 2.5 Flash generated for us. The board UI looks good, and the functionality works well. It actually fulfills all the requirements such as creating, editing, and deleting boards and tasks, as well as dragging a task between boards. With that, I will mark this second task as a pass. The third task is to build a procedural CT generator using the HTML5 Canvas API. It should draw a top-down view of a city with randomly generated elements such as streets, buildings, parks, and intersections. Include simple animations like cars moving along, likes in buildings, and people in parks. The layout should regenerate with each refresh but follow a consistent logic. Output size is 1000 times 600 pixels, show output in one HTML file. Alright, so this is what Flash generated for us. I will say the result is quite good. The streets, buildings, parks, and cars are all there. The car's animation could be improved as it just move along one line, but I think that's not a problem. I didn't specify how the car animation should run, only that the object is animated in a simple way. With that result, this task is also a pass. For the next test, it's a logical question to test the thinking and instruction following power of the model. Okay, so Flash got the answer correct for this question. The number of crossings is 7. First, the farmer will take the chicken because it's okay to leave the fox with the grain. Then, the farmer go back to take the fox across, then take the chicken back, get the grain across, then go back to get the chicken. Okay, so Flash also passed this test. Now, for the final test, Create a minimalist CSS-only painting of a sunset over mountains reflected in a lake. Use no images or SVGs, only HTML and CSS. The painting should have a sun, mountain peaks, and the reflection in the lake. Make it responsive so the painting scales well on different screen sizes. Alright, so here's the painting generated by 2.5 Flash. It fulfilled all the requirements specified in the prom, which is a sun, mountain peaks, and the reflections in the lake. The right side of this mountain is a bit off though, as it drops straight down instead of sloping naturally. Now let's test the responsiveness. Alright, the painting is responsive. Although the mountain side is weird, I will give this one a pass as it fulfills all the requirements. And now we have finished all the tests. I have to say, 2.5 Flash is a fantastic all-rounder model. The model seems to live up to its name, with its low price and speedy response, while keeping up in quality. While it's not a SOTA or state-of-the-art model, it is definitely a very fine addition in the space of AI. There is no rate limit when you use it in Google AI Studio, and the free API grants you 500 requests per day. This means everyone can try out the model quite extensively, before deciding to use it as their main AI model. Beside Google AI Studio, you can also use 2.5 Flash in popular code editors. For example, here in Cursor, just go to Settings, and then Models, scroll down a little, and you can already see the 2.5 Flash model here. 
If you're on the cursor free plan, I think the same 50 slow requests as prom will apply to all 2.5 flash calls. If you want to use Google's 500 requests per day limit, you can add a Gemini API key to cursor, right down, over here. Go back to Google AI Studio, then select the Get API Key button. Here, click Create API Key, then select one Google Cloud project where the key will be generated. If you don't have a project yet, an option to create a new one will be shown just like this. Once the key is generated, copy the key, then get back to cursor. Paste the key, then click verify, then approve this, and you are now good to go. You can disable this API key anytime here. Alright, now open the cursor chat window with common L or control L, click the models drop down, and select the 2.5 flash model. And that's it for cursor. If you're using VS Code, you can also add the model to the code editor easily. So all you have to do is open the Copilot chat window, then go down to the models drop down below the chat box, and select the add new models option. Here, select Gemini, then enter your API key. If you don't see the model name on the screen, click add custom model, click OK, then you will be asked to enter the model ID. The ID of the Gemini model can be found at Google Cloud documentation, but it's essentially the name of the model, the type, and the release date as shown here. I will leave the link in the description for you to check. Copy this model ID, then paste it in Copilot. Press enter. Now you will be asked whether you want to configure the model or use default settings. If you decide to configure the model, you can edit the model name, the max input and output tokens for the model, and whether the model can use tools and understand images. Now, open the model's drop down again, and you can now use 2.5 Flash with Copilot. Now if you use either Klein or Roo extension, you can also add 2.5 Flash there. For Klein, open the Settings tab, then select the Klein API provider, then just search for the Gemini Flash model. Here, the model is split into two, the thinking and regular models. I think the thinking model may use the reasoning ability of the model, while this other one disables the thinking mode completely. You can also use the Open Router API here. Just search for Gemini, and then you can see the same models there. Now you're probably thinking, why not just use Gemini as the API provider? Well, that's because Klein hasn't updated the model list in Google Gemini yet. At least when I made this video, as you can see here, and there is no way to add model ID in Klein. I'm pretty sure they will update this later, so if you see the 2.5 flash model here, go ahead and use it. For Roo code, the API is already updated, so just open the settings tab, and in the API provider option, select Google Gemini, paste in the key from AI Studio, then select 2.5 flash from the dropdown. As I said in my RuCode video, RuCode developers just deliver new updates faster when compared to Klein. So this proves what I said once again. And that brings us to the end of the tutorial. So, what do you think about Google's new Gemini 2.5 Flash? Personally, it's my favorite model right now for coding and research. The price to performance ratio is just hard to beat. But when it comes to building complex applications, I still prefer Gemini 2.5 Pro. The Pro has better performance and is still relatively affordable as the either test showed. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. So make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting or useful. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in other videos. Bye bye.